Welcome to the studio. I'm Melissa Chan, and we're in conversation the next 30 minutes with Svetlana Tsikunuskaya, leader of the Democratic Opposition in Belarus. As usual, there will be a question and answer period, so definitely post your questions early in the chat box, and we'll try to get to as many of your questions as possible. Now, Tsikunuskaya hardly needs an introduction. I'll keep it brief, but her husband ran as an opposition candidate in the presidential in the presidential election in what is widely considered Europe's last dictatorship. He was arrested. She took his place. Unfortunately, she had to flee the country and go into exile while hundreds of thousands of protesters in Belarus took to the streets in support of her and against dictator Lukashenko. Her government in exile is demanding fair and free elections in the country of Belarus and the release of political prisoners, including her husband. Welcome, Madam Tsikhanouskaya. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Now, RightsCon is a summit that happens at the intersection of human rights and technology. So I want to begin by asking about how the people of Belarus used technology during your election campaign and during the protests. This is a country with a lot of young coders and engineers. There's a startup scene. And I think a lot of people at RightsCon are super interested in how the people of Belarus leveraged technology. So I, I have to say that uh, technology plays huge role not only uh, during uh, played huge role not only during our uprising but uh, till now when we continue our fight. I think that uh, in 2020 technology helped us to mobilize and spread information. You know, uh, uh, technology helped us to create a platform for discussions and uh, unleash uh, uh, creative campaigns and ideas. You know, just, just a few examples. Uh, in uh, 2020, we collected thousands of signatures for presidential candidates. And when our election was rigged, we uh, organized alternative voting through the platform Holos, like, like Voice. Its founder revealed uh, that I received 3 million votes and Lukashenko lost the election and we know it thanks to uh, Belarusians on the streets who protested for months, but also thanks to technology. And uh, through like such platforms as Telegram, YouTube and other social media channels, our people uh, like united and uh, organized uh, the movement against Lukashenko. Uh, people uh, shared updates on protests, even in uh, local no neighborhoods. Volunteers collected uh, data on the detainees and uh, other, uh, other things. Also, crowdfunding uh, platforms became uh, the new state. Belarusians organized uh, all the support for hospitals during COVID and for people when repressions began. And it shows how creative and uh, united we are. Also, uh, it's not about our uprising, but about the war against Ukraine. When uh, Russia launched uh, this war, our people uh, sent thousands of photos and videos every day uh, informing uh, about um, uh, the movement of R Russian troops and missiles launches. And this information like helped the Ukrainians prepare for uh, possible attacks or bombings and uh, worried Russians, you know, who to some extent didn't feel safe in our country uh, that Lukashenko offered as a launching pad for the war. And it showed once again that uh, Belarusians are against the dictator, they are against the war. And uh, also one of the, our recent projects, uh, it's Digital Belarus, uh, that uh, will offer, it's on the, in, 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 at the state of a project at the moment, but uh, this service will uh, offer different online services for Belarusians and uh, uh, will also work on electronic IDs uh, for our people, uh, because now Lukashenko's regime uh, like uh, say that those who fled the country, uh, like Belarus doesn't need these people anymore. But we want to show that we are united and uh, just to through this platform, Digital Belarus, to show how many of us uh, who are opposing the regime, who are opposing the war. 
How is your government and how are you sending messages to the people of Belarus inside the country? Are the technology tools, the circumvention tools effective? So, uh, of course, uh, we are using um, all the possible... Uh, all the possible uh, technologies, you know, to spread information, alternative information in Belarus. Uh, again, we are using uh, YouTube, Telegram channels, uh, Instagram, everything that uh, Lukashenko's regime can't block. They can't block the whole internet, and we have to use every opportunity to uh, give information to uh, people. Uh, but of course, regime also uses technologies in the same extent, and um, they have much more resources to put um, to put the uh, information on like advertisements on YouTube for example and more and more people can can uh, see it so it's uh, extremely important now for technology companies to block uh, regimes uh, propaganda you know to block the advertisement but to help uh, Belarusians with the, the alternative information it's important to uh, support our alternative media, bloggers, you know, all this stuff to uh, help Belarusians to get true information about the situation in Belarus and in Ukraine. So you mentioned YouTube and um, the regime or misinformation um, paying for ads on YouTube or, or whatever to spread the information. Have you been in touch with technology companies? And if so, which ones have they been uh, working with you, or have they mostly not listened to you and your requests? Uh, so my team uh, has consultations with Google, Facebook, and uh, other companies. But of course, we see that uh, we need more, uh, like more collaboration. You know, I must uh, admit that uh, Belarusians count for more uh, support from big tech. Uh, as I said, during the mass protests for the presidential election in 2020, uh, you know, the regime switched off the internet for several days and continued turning it off uh, during mass rallies on Sundays uh, in the following months. And uh, Belarusians were disoriented and couldn't coordinate rallies well. There was also a lot of fear among citizens because they didn't know what, what was happening. And of course, watching at Starlinks, I wish we also had uh, them, you know, back then. And I would say that, uh, I would say today that we will need uh, to find a solution for future protests and uh, uh, media blackout. And also I'm confident that um, uh, tech companies and platforms could help us spread information and um, advance democracy in Belarus. You know, uh, our media and journalists have uh, problems with promoting content in Belarusian language. Sadly for uh, Google, you know, it's easier to stop supporting less widely used languages than to build a Belarusian office. But uh, paying attention to our language is an important step, you know, to help uh, preserve our identity. Also, Russian propaganda can reach our people easier than uh, the content from uh, Belarusian independent media. So uh, a separate, like, Belarus segment is uh, crucial in uh, um, our fight. Uh, also, when we are communicating with big tech companies, we are advocating for banning uh, pro Lukashenko propaganda and the state television channels from YouTube because they spread mis misinformation about the war in Ukraine. And while uh, Russia pro propaganda channels are banned, uh, the regimes the regime keeps uh, promoting it. Also, uh, oh, go yeah, ahead, in, please, please. I'd like to hear more. Uh, it's also crucial to counter internet censorship and uh, like suppressing surveillance technology, which the regime uses to uh, control access to information. We need uh, censorship circumvention tools and uh, like relevant software for use. And this is where uh, big tech companies can be very like useful and supportive to us. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier that Belarus can't entirely shut down all of the internet off, um, but we are seeing more and more authoritarian states around the world do exactly that. Um, and so uh, are you concerned that long-term, uh, even as you try to 
um, send information to the people of Belarus that they will, as you uh, refer to, the amount of misinformation and propaganda is far more than what you're trying to push in terms of information, that eventually the people of Belarus will, very much like what's happened in Russia, very much mm. actually China is a great example, right? China blocked Facebook and Twitter more than a decade ago. And, you know, the people there, uh, it's, they, they believe the propaganda, many of them, the majority of them. And the majority of Russians seem to support the war in Ukraine because they, they don't know better. Are you worried about the people in Belarus, the people who support you now, uh, eventually succumbing to propaganda over the next few years, over the next decade? Uh, you know, I think that uh, mm, I'm speaking on behalf of Belarusians, that Belarusian people know uh, today how to get alternative information. Of course, the older generation of people who don't have access uh, to internet or don't know how, don't want to study how to use it, they believe um, in the state TV, you know, state propaganda, but more and more people are uh, involved into getting uh, real information. They are looking for this information. And of course, um, it's very important to uh, teach uh, them how to uh, circum circumvent all the uh, like um, bl blockings, you know, that uh, that uh, regime uh, can control uh, uh, media. For example, we uh, people in Belarus know how to use VPN and uh, other censorship circumvention tools. So, uh, what is important is to um, help uh, bloggers and journalists with the equipment with the verification tools you know for them to feel secure in this um, uh, internet space so i don't believe that uh, uh, birds and people uh, will start uh, you know to follow propaganda channels but it's very important it's crucial to uh, support uh, alternative media for us to be more vocal because we don't have, you know, as, as uh, uh, democratic forces, we don't have so uh, much, um, uh, so much, you know, uh, how to say, um, so much uh, tools, okay, you know, to uh, to um, uh, deliver information as, as propaganda has so so much, you know, experts, but we believe that uh, uh, modern technologists uh, will understand that it's their task as well to stop propaganda from spreading their information, but support uh, those forces, those powers, those people who want to show the truth about uh, the situation in our country, in Ukraine, and, you know, all over the world. Now, you mentioned uh, that you wished that Starlink had been there. Um, have you been in touch with Elon Musk about that? And also, you talk about circumvention tools and needing that help. Uh, how are you going about it? Uh, do you need to raise money? Um, are you perhaps uh, talking to international NGOs that work in tech uh, to do this in order to uh, send messages to Belarus and keep that line of communication open? Now, I suppose that after 2020, uh, our local IT companies, so local NGOs, uh, they try to reach uh, Elon Musk, but maybe at that time, uh, the recent problem wasn't uh, too important for uh, this company. Uh, but uh, now, uh, seeing what's going on in Ukraine and that uh, Stalin provided uh, them with equipment, we also uh, want to get the same maybe access to um, this equipment to this equipment because uh, uh, democratic values are common for all the countries. So, uh, but as for technologies, you know, we think that. In these difficult times for Ukraine, for Belarus, uh, it would be very nice, you know, for uh, for Google and uh, other different companies, you know, to provide uh, people who are fighting with dictatorship for free. So for us, not uh, don't have necessity to uh, fundraise money to buy some uh, equipment or technologies, uh, because uh, we have to understand that we are fighting for the same values, for the values you have uh, in uh, democracies. But uh, this is our common course to um, uh, to get 
more democratic countries into, into this family of democracies for free. You know, we uh, really, it's it's not necessary to get money right. uh, from um, people who are fighting for Got changes. Uh, Madame Tsukunuskaya, uh, we have a lot of questions coming in, so I want to get to them. So uh, I want to end our segment with a question that's not related to technology. Um, you're the leader in exile of Belarus, and I'm curious how you make sure over time that you don't become a, a dissident in exile. Uh, you are a leader in exile right now. How do you make sure that you are not a dissident in exile? And what I mean by that is that, um, you know, you have a small team. It's, it's not a full government. And we have seen in the past other governments in exiles over the decades sometimes fade into irrelevance. Um, so I'm curious how your team talks about the future. So our main task is to stay in contact with the Belarusians who are in Belarus, who are fighting for the future of our country, and to stay in contact with the uh, people with democratic forces who are in exile. And thanks again to technologies, to Zoom conferences, you know, to Instagram, we uh, managing to uh, keep uh, constant contact with the uh, people in Belarus. So. And I see that uh, Belarusians are desperately fighting. Yes, on the ground. Yes, you don't see huge massive rallies on the streets of uh, uh, our Belarusian cities, but the spirit of freedom is, is alive in Belarusians. And we, um, as people, need energy. And every time when we see that uh, technology companies, when our uh, Politician forces, uh, mm. uh, different NGOs are helping us uh, on our way. We are uh, like uh, ener energizing right. ourselves. We understand that we are not abandoned, that uh, uh, we are not uh, agreed with this regime. We are not agreed that uh, our political prisoners will spend years in jail for just um, uh, being uh, being free people, dead to, to oppose the regime. What? So. Um, it's very important. The contact is very important. And thanks again to technologists, we are managing to keep this contact with people. Well, that leads into um, our first question from Rob. Um, are you more optimistic about returning to Belarus after seeing how the war in Ukraine has unfolded? Uh, look, we understand that um, the fate of Ukraine and fate of Belarus are interconnected. And without free Ukraine, there will be no free Belarus. But without free Belarus, there will be no uh, secure Ukraine, no secure Western countries. Uh, so we understand that the Belarus, uh, Belarusian regime is a part of uh, regional problem, and this problem has to be solved in complex. So I see um, international support to Ukraine, seeing how Ukrainians uh, are brave and courage and seeing how Belarusians are ready to help Ukrainians. You know that a lot of uh, Belarusian uh, men are fighting al alongside Ukrainians. I really believe that uh, Ukraine will win uh, this war and it will give us Belarusians one more window of opportunity to uh, get rid of the regime. And we are not just uh, sitting and waiting the outcome of the war. We are preparing for this period, for uh, this trigger, you know, for, for this window of opportunity. We are helping Ukrainians on the one side, but also continue to fight the regime, like exhausting um, uh, regime structures, uh, uh, economically, politically, and strengthening uh, civil society, media, human rights defending centers. So this is our strategy now. And uh, yes, I, I, I don't just have hope. I'm sure that uh, this regime will collapse uh, with the, mm, uh, because of Belarusian people will uh, for changing situation in Belarus and for support and solidarity we see from uh, our international partners. Now, is there space for civil societies of Belarus and Russia to collaborate to fight for the common goal of freedom for their two countries and against the war and repression of Putin and Lukashenko? That question comes from Natalia. Um, 
So for during the last two years, uh, Lukashenko's regime deliberately ruined all the NGOs in Belarus, all the alternative media, you know, to suppress um, to suppress uh, civil society. But Belarusian people managed to restore their activity in exile. Yes, it's, we are not in the country, and uh, most of uh, most of uh, leadership of different companies uh, are not in the country, but. Uh, our presence uh, in Belarus, uh, presence of NGOs, you know, is inevitable, and um, uh, we 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 managed to, like as I said, to communicate with people. So our uh, our civil society is blossoming. I have to say. Uh, yes, not in Belarus. Yes, it's, it's extremely difficult because uh, a regime doesn't know the borders. They ruined not only NGOs, now they are ruin, ruining also uh, trade unions. Like uh, they want to shut shut uh, up uh, everybody in, in our country. But uh, they will not succeed because you can um, suppress people physically, but you can't stop revolution in people's minds. It's it's uh, people uh, uh, like uh, it was like people's awakening in 2020, and people will not go and sleep again for for next uh, for next uh, 10 20 years. The next question comes from Anna, and she's wondering how people in Belarus fight for freedom of thought on the internet. We discussed this a little earlier about um, my question and concerns about how people maintain freedom of thought over the years and don't succumb to propaganda. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Uh, would you paraphrase the question, you know, for me to understand better, please? Uh, yeah. Um, the question is how people can, um, how they participate on the internet. What kind of messages are they sending out to maintain the channel of communication and to continue the fight uh, against the dictatorship of Lukashenko? So I guess, um, you know, what are people talking about that that they can on Telegram or when they're when they're using the VPNs? What are they talking about um, in Belarus to try to move things forward, to try to improve the situation, to try to fight against the dictatorship? So, you know, our uh, task as Belarusian people to create uh, multiple points of pressure on the regime. So people talk about different things. You know, uh, some people uh, uh, communicate about sanction regime. You know, uh, people from Belarus send information to uh, special telegram channels about how, for example, regimes are conventing sanctions. And our task is to close uh, the loopholes. Some people um, launch educational programs to to uh, explain ordinary people who have been uh, living under dictatorship for 27 years and don't even understand what democracy is. So uh, people, so our experts educate people what democracy is. They give examples of uh, other countries. Uh, they prepare uh, Belarusian society for changing that uh, democracy is rather difficult and you have to take responsibility for the future of your country. Uh, many people, uh, you know, communicate about um, uh, uh, about how to strengthen civil society. You know, we launch different programs uh, for students, for uh, teachers, for doctors. And uh, we have, uh, you know, we have uh, our common like platform, uh, Belarusian platform where all the initiatives are collected in one place. Uh, and people can choose any initiative and discuss uh, within this uh, initiative, within this Telegram channel, uh, the topic that is interested for them. And this uh, majority of unity of uh, all those um, uh, of all those uh, initiatives uh, give platform for for discussion or uh, anything. You know, I, I myself have uh, my like networks platform for for dialogue. I myself participate mostly in uh, Instagram chatting and I uh, personally answer uh, most all the uh, questions that people ask me in Instagram. So we are trying to use as, as uh, many tools as possible and uh, where people can find right. a, any interesting topic. Uh, there's a question from Oliver um, wondering what is the best, who best or what organization uh, to is best to reach out to if they have um, uh, tech skills themselves, so non-Belarusians, people who want to help 
uh, Belarus. If they have skills um, that they want to volunteer, uh, who do they contact? Who should they contact? So uh, the entry point can be uh, the office uh, that is situated in Vilnius at the moment, and we can provide any person who is interested in volunteering with necessary context, depending on uh, uh, what uh, this person uh, wants or where uh, this person wants to help. So there are plenty of companies, but uh, maybe it will be the easiest to uh, get through office of Svetlana Tikhanovskaya. Great. And more generally, a question from Donna asks, um, how can people uh, support the people of Belarus? So it doesn't have to be technology related, but, but in general, what's the best way to show support for you? So if you are talking about uh, ordinary people, not politicians, uh, um, the easiest way to show your solidarity uh, is to support political prisoners. You know, write letters to our people behind the bars because they are um, really isolated from uh, uh, from the people and the letters is the only source of information for them. And they are so grateful when they get uh, letters, not only from Belarusians, but also from uh, people all over the world. It gives them assurance that they are not abandoned, that they are not forget forgotten, that people are fighting for them. Also, you can communicate with your relatives, with your, um, I don't know, uh, uh, with people around you explaining what's going on in Belarus, explaining that our fight is still uh, going on. Yes, you don't uh, see pictures of rallies, but uh, just imagine the wave of repressions in our country. Tell them um, how our political prisoners are suffering behind the bars. Give, those, them, give them those pictures uh, for them to feel, uh, to feel empathy for girls and fight. Uh, also, if you have possibility, you can donate to uh, different funds that support uh, political prisoners or uh, support our Belarus and battalion in Ukraine or to support families of political prisoners. And uh, ju just be vocal. Just don't, don't forget that there is mm. Belarus where fight is still going on because I understand now uh, Ukraine is in the focus and we fully understand this. But don't forget that um, and nearby Ukraine there is Belarus. You were fascinated with in 2020 and uh, tell uh, that uh, our uh, the repressions in our country continues every day, new detentions happen every day and people live like in Gulag but despite of this, they are fighting. So spread information and uh, help uh, financially if you have possibility. I, I want to end with a question for you. Um, RightsCon brings a, thousands of activists around the world together. Uh, and uh, over the course of the week, they have very serious discussions. H how do you, a lot of people work on very dark subjects here um, at RightsCon. What would you tell people who sometimes as activists um, feel little hope or, or feel tired against the fight against authoritarianism? What advice would you say to them? Look, I maybe I don't lose hope, but I'm also very, uh, uh, very often tired and exhausted and Sometimes you want to forget about everything and live with the ordinary life. But every time, uh, in my case, I think about people who sacrificed uh, with their freedom, some with their lives to give us opportunity to uh, fight. Uh, think about the future generations. You have to understand that your fight for democratic changes in, is not in vain, that you, your country, your people deserve better future and they deserve to live uh, uh, in the country that shares uh, uh, common values with um, already democratic countries and if you're losing hope uh, communicate to people who uh, still have uh, like inside power who still believes and it will uh, give you a little bit more hope as well so um, there is no one single receipt how to restore your resources, but uh, 
believe that you are not alone. Uh, democratic countries are with you. People around the world are with you. Uh, just, uh, uh, just be positive about the uh, future of your country, the future of your fight. Yes, it's difficult. I understand and realize it. And I have uh, uh, my husband in prison, and I, I have to explain my children uh, that possibly they will not see his, their daddy in next couple of uh, days, months, uh, maybe years, you know, who knows. But uh, we have to fight. We have to fight uh, for the sake of the people in prisons, for the sake of children for the sake of uh, the future of your country. So stay strong and never lose hope. Madame Tsikhanouskaya, thank you so much for joining us. We're very grateful for your time. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.